Hi, this is Maginoni, and here's my comic review uh, for three X-Men titles that came out. We have X-Men number 13, X-Men 538, or say Uncanny X-Men, and Prelude to Schism number 3 of 4. I'll do this one first. Now, I think they're finally... I guess you can say this, this is starting to finally make a little better sense as to what's going on. Um, I'm just amazed that this guy can draw Cyclops looking outside a window this many times, and it's just crazy. Uh, you'd think he would have gotten bored by that by now. Um, this is basically, what they're doing here is not only are they introducing or reintroducing uh, important people within the storyline, but they're also laying the groundwork for what's going to happen in Schism. Because like, if you haven't been keeping up, what's going to happen is eventually the the X-Men are going to split into two teams, one led by Wolverine and one by Cyclops. So what this basically does is it's saying who these people are, and not just like Cyclops and Magneto and, and like that, but it's also, this is what Emma Frost means to uh, Cyclops. This is what Wolverine means to Cyclops, um, and so on and so on. In this issue here, we get kind of like a retelling of Cyclops' origin, but they go into a little bit more details because you actually see him before the, that fateful uh, time we got pushed out of the um, airplane, and they explain, you know, why he, he doesn't have control over his eyes, eye beams. And um, also what I thought was really important is we learn who he's talking to. And, you know, I guess you can assume maybe he's talking to himself, and in a very general way, but it it he specifically says who he's talking to without quite. Well, no, I, it, yeah, he pretty much says exactly this is who it, he is. And uh, for those of you who couldn't figure it out, he's basically talking to Gene in his mind, and it's helping him, I guess, through this process of figuring out do they stay or do they go. And since obviously we have um, a big X Men event coming up. I guess you can imagine what his decision is. Um, so in a way, I guess you can say I'm glad I stuck with this, but I don't think that this is... I don't think this was like a, 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 an oh my god comic. This was just a, a decent attempt at laying down the foundation before the big event. And for that, I guess you can say it, it succeeded, um, at least so far. I'm curious to see what's going to happen in that very last issue. Uh, next up is Uncanny X-Men number 538. Oh, oh, oh. Um, I don't know, there's just something about this that, like, I normally like Dodson's artwork, but something about this, just, I don't like it as much as I did. Like, if you remember, Dodson did um, a Spider-Man run uh, for Marvel Knights, and that, I just, for some, that just clicked with me. But when I'm seeing this, I guess I, I guess I can say it just doesn't hold the same uh, sense of wonder that I had that I really appreciated it. Um, like I said, we basically just have, it's like the, the last part of the battle between um, the X-Men and the aliens, and um, the, the key thing that's really important in this book, and, and I need to spoil this for you, because if you don't read this book, you will not know what happened. Um, basically, Kitty Pride is now able to, as you can see by this picture, hold things again. Uh, she's now solid. She she has a much greater control over her power, and they explain how this happens. And to be honest with you, I thought this was the cheapest thing that they did. Um, I I don't want to. I don't know if this was their grand scheme uh, to bring you know to give her her powers back, but I felt cheated because the way it happened, it was kind of like. I guess it, one way to describe it is this: Imagine you have uh, a room that's dark all the time, and and you can't figure out what's wrong because you can't go into the room to figure it out. And somebody comes and just changes the light bulb without you knowing about it, and the next time you open the door, and, you, and then the, there's light. It's kind of like that. You, you know, you, you were cheated out of the puzzle. You couldn't figure it out yourself. And I, I was really hoping that they were going to do something to make, like, to make an epic storyline to get her powers back. You know, I don't care what they did, just as long as there's sacrifice, as long as there's something 
like a drive, something like there's a risk involved to get her powers back. This just ha like it just happened off panel, and it when it's like boom, it's on, and that's I just I I don't know, it it, it really I can honestly say it really truly ruined the story for me completely. And I know basically they're just house cleaning because they have to get Uncandy done uh, in time for the Schism event. And then they also have to resolve her powers so this way they can put her on the next team. So, very, very disappointed. And on to X-Men number 13 with the um, Evolution people. Or, I'm sorry, Evolution Mutant Monkeys. Um, are, I'm, I'm satisfied with the general artwork overall. I think... Um, while it's not what I would consider top tier work, I do think that it, it you know, for this it fits perfectly. Uh, it doesn't do anything to really make my eyes want to bleed or anything like that. And there's some nice panel, like the nice position, positioning of characters, you know, the, the viewpoint. I think there's also some decent, like, battle scenes. Like, I love this two page spread here with Storm and Magneto. And, um,. There's like some nice plays with the lights and darks when they when they go to see Magneto in the past. Um, this is another episode, or sorry, issue where I had a lot invested in it, thinking, "Wow, this is going to get really interesting really quick." But when Magneto and these guys met again in, in modern days, it kind of left me. Uh, I guess you could say it left me disappointed. I expected more from that. If you remember my review on this last issue, I, I wanted some, I wanted, you know, like life-changing uh, encounter. But obviously with the big mini-series that's coming, you can't do that. Because Magneto is probably going to be a predominant player in what's to come. You know, like my guess is Magneto is going to go to one side, Professor X is going to go to the other. And I wouldn't, you know, part of me wouldn't be surprised if Magneto goes to Cyclops' side. And you can't do that if he's bad. But anyways, uh, the ending, it it kind of left me wondering. It's like you have your telepath who's basically, you know, giving everybody updates as to what's going on, but you leave her unguarded. And I, 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 go, I don't understand how you do that. Even though you are in your own home, why would you do that? It just, it seems to me very amateurish. I would, if I was in charge of this, I would never have, you never have, like, one, it's, you know, it's like this, you know, you know, like, for an example, the Army, the Navy, you know, Marines, you know, uh, and that's this is for every single foreign country. They don't have one line of communication to talk to everybody, because if that one line was ever cut, then it's over, you know, there's thousands of lines of communication that and they're well protected and I understand that you can't have the thousands of lines of communication in this situation but you would think that you would keep it well protected and I understand that it, since this is a comic book and you need to advance the story a certain way the, um, the protection in this case would have just been demolished really fast and but again, it, it, what I would rather have seen is the attempt, it, it's the attention to detail, I guess you can say, because here you have Cyclops, who's supposed to be a brilliant strategist, a brilliant leader, but yet he leaves a critical um, piece of um, his network unprotected. And I know that they've done this in the past every single time, and nothing ever happens, but it's just, I don't know, it, to me it just seems that why do you leave yourself exposed to something like that? Uh, but anyways, that's my um, review of these three. I'm hoping that this will pick up. I think at the end, who there's a new player involved, and I'm, I am curious to see how that they are going to uh, play into all of this. Hope for the future. I'm really hoping, and I'm glad this is over or it's ending because it needs. It's like that wounded dog that, you know, really needs to be put out because it can never live the same again. Uh, if you have any comments or questions, let me know. Rate the video up or down. Let me know what you think. And I'll have more reviews up later. So until next time.